Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and Chris is his element today. He's going to get to hit a bag. I'm going to hit you again. Mm, maybe. Depends. Okay. So he's looking for a little toolkit of ideas and we come across the nice little strike. What's this weed business? I did. And I made it better. As usual. By leaving me alone to get on with it. So the idea of this strike is called a graze. Now we've seen the great strikes where we come in and it's hit the peck, drag down, cause loads of pain. You like that, didn't you? Be honest. So let's get on Chris's favourite thing, the bag, and he'll show you what the technique's all about. So I was doing some research, reading a book, because Kevin can't read. And I was looking at different sword designs, etc. And it linked in with what Kev was saying about these soft strikes. But if you look at some of the Egyptian swords, some of the old Greek swords, they had hook swords, Kev's favourite. So if you look at a tip strike, so you're doing your poke or your bayonet strikes, very effective. But if you're not 100% on target, they can go off. Now, if you've got the ferrule on, they will stick, they'll grip the clothes, which is great. But I thought about inverting it. I mean, if I'm standing here, I can do a nice strike. But the idea for me was that if I strike this, I don't have to be on the center. And if I get a good strike, it's great. If I go this way, it will graze through. I can then come onto my hook. So I'm looking at bayonet strikes, and it will graze through, so we get that soft strike, so rather blunt force trauma that we get from this, we're getting this. So it works the same, but it gives us a bit more technique to play with, if you like. The idea is, it's going to come in, glance off, reverse, pull through. So, Chris is going to show you gently what he's looking at in the way of the body. Remember, I need this body. No, you don't. So if I go, I want this for a poke or a bayonet. Nice area. A little nice bit like a solar plexus, but it's nice. But if I'm not quite on, it can slide. Even with a ferrule, don't mind take the clothing, it, it can slip through. If you're going to hit me as well, go back to that position please mate. What do you mean if? If you're going to hit me and I see it coming, the body's natural reaction is to do that to help it along. So, the, but with this, now, if I'm holding it like this, this will go straight in and I've got the hook. If I'm, please don't hurt me, my name's Kevin and I'm scared. He knows what's coming. I can strike <laughs> and it will just go through. It doesn't matter if, even if he turns with it, it doesn't matter. I'm still getting that a broadside. If it's this way around, because I've got this grip, as I'm thrusting through, I'm pulling back. Now this is only stage one. There's so much more I could do with this, which I'm going to. But it means that for you, it's going to be a split second. For me, I've got five minutes of getting it in the body armor. I'll be back. Okay, it's not December the 25th and I'm trusting like a turkey. Ow. Now, the first time we do this, very slow, very gentle, especially on the return because lovely pad in here, but I've got nothing back there. You've got nothing. Now, I have, now in the trunk, as they say. I have got some more bag drills that we can do. Kevin wants to get hit, so we thought we'd do this bit first. Well, the bag you can't see in that mean physiology, here you can. So, again, we always talk about the grip, what grip you're in. If I'm holding it in a standard walking grip, mm -hmm. why's your elbow up there? Ooh. So you don't hit my arm with the cane? It's going to. Mm. But when I bring this up into my guard position, because we talked about different guards, I'm actually just reversing it through and I'm doing a and then I've got the hook onto the kev. Yep. Now we're doing this very linear 
at the moment. Are you calling me linear? I am. If it's one-handed, so I've got the what well, Kev calls the Phoenix grip, I can drive that through anywhere. Yeah. Now, if he's got his arm there, that gives me a lovely lever point to come through. If not, I've got the ribs. Don't need two hands for this one either. One hand. I just need a general area as a target, not a. If I, I'm looking at that circle. No. Yeah. But he's not going to stand still for me. I could be doing this. So I just need a general area. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yeah. That was quite general. It was. And if I I got that slide through, I got the hook. Now, if I'm here and I've got advanced warning, I can step back. I've got my bayonet strike. And I'm at, this is only midsection strikes. With the slide, that's naturally going to come up here. Yep. And what comes up must come down. If I decide I want to do a downward strike. And then he turns the hook and does an upward. Yeah. Yep. It, so, it's not looking good, this at the moment. Why did I put this on? I did offer. So it doesn't matter. You've just got this general. The angle doesn't matter. It's going to slide through. If it's this way around, because you might, for some reason, have that grip. I don't know. Because sometimes you flip it up. That way around, it's still going to go. And it naturally follows a straight line. If you notice, when I'm striking, it naturally turning and aligning. So that's going to go straight up. And what normally happens with that is, we get that triple strike effect, video pattern pending. You get that triple strike from one. Which works lovely. Okay, just to show you how effective this is going to be, I'm going to brace myself. And uh, it's not going to go obviously full force because I'm all broken ribs. So if this is. Give you a bit of power, just if I brace myself really. Now if I'm trying to push him away, I've selected this grip. This will be one handed. I'm not going to go at full power. So this will be my distraction, keep away. Oh no, please don't hurt me. So I'm going to travel about a foot and a half. I'm just going to give it a gentle one-handed brace yourself. F all. <laughs> if you think about it, the worse it's going to be. I know. I've been thinking about it for ten minutes. Get on with it. But you're looking at it now. And that was. I literally did. I literally did this. I literally did this. This is how. And it was just. <laughs> And it was just a gentle the wind there. The wind expels from your lungs and you feel very foolish. I didn't do anything except move my arm. So if I started adding in body motion, weight forms, if I just stepped back and then decided to come through and drive, I don't have to be accurate with this. And this was the key point for this. Now, thanks to the petition online, the Save the Kev petition. Which didn't work. It did work. But there was at least three signatures. Yeah, they all said Kevin Fitzgerald. Immaterial. We're going to show you some full force on the bag stuff. Um, yeah, this also gave me a lead in to do creating distance and some big strikes that you can take up as a flow with this. So first of all, we're going to show you the power, then we'll show you the back off, then we'll show you the flow. So right, flow. Right, F4. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's just like that. So here I am with my trusty Kevin substitute. I've got my cane, I'm ready, I've got the guard, and I'm just going to go from here to here. Nothing's, but there's no power in that other than me just moving my arms forward. If I start adding in, getting my feet going forward, the bag goes a lot further. What I'm aiming for now is to get that coming through. So the bag isn't going anywhere, which is what I want. I want it to slide through, then I've got the hook on. And we've done lots of videos of putting into elbows, etc. So we don't need to worry about that. So if I'm holding my cane like this, I get my distance, I've caught my cane. So this could be the same as a crook strike. What I've done is grabbed it for a bayonet strike. Now, if I've done that and they've pushed the cane away, they've pushed it away, they've turned out the way, using that momentum, if you remember the sticky cane principles, if they've pushed it away, it's going to go that way for the sake of this. So if I've done and they've pushed, all I have to do 
to bring it round. So it's very difficult to see unless you've got somebody doing it. If I come in and they've grabbed the cane, we've done cane disarm techniques, it may be they've redirected the, the position of the cane. But this is something you have to work with the partner to get what to do. If they've grabbed it and locked it off, reverse it. Go with the power. Their reaction will be to grab it and pull it. Go with it. So these are little things you can think about whilst you're training with a partner. With a bag, you're dealing with power. Does it have to be a straight bayonet? It can be straight down. Now this works well, because it is not going to catch, it's just going to scrape. So rather than being a blunt force trauma like you would do with a number, let's say 12 strike, just to annoy Kevin. It is 12. It is 12. If you do it with the crook side, it's going to pull through. And then, then you can pull through. Same with these diagonals. So rather than being stopped, it would stop there. So pulling away, dragging through, these will come through naturally. But these are really good for giving you distance. So I've flipped up, I've struck, I can then swing. Works well with one hand. We've done this a lot from the three by six. But if I am here, you can also do your nice figure of eight motions, up, up strikes, because it will flow because you're not stopping. And that's why I quite like this end. If this was a blade, it would cut and it would go through and continue going through. Look at old Egyptian swords. That's why they were designed that way. And this is what lends it well to this. Plus we have the pulling on afterwards. So you do get, and it just keeps going. Work out your own drills with it. Then work with a partner to go to the next level, which is, okay, I've done that, they've grabbed it, what do I do? They've pushed it, deflect, deflected it. What's a deflect? I don't know. I know what an affleck is, but not a deflect. It's what pronounced if... backfleck. But work with the what if it goes wrong scenario as well. So as you see, that's quite a nice little handy technique and it's literally all come from not hitting a spot or hitting through a spot, which we've always told karate, hit through the person, Wing Chun, you're hitting a, a, a spot, especially if you're doing like chain punching. This is actually, I'm hitting, but I'm dragging because I don't want that to be my final attack. I want my hand down to here so maybe I can roll over. So Chris's special little technique is actually quite special. Yeah, in our karate system, rather than, he's going to put his arm there for me, like, like all good self-defense. See, like he didn't hit me, he's going to leave it there. But rather than go, not to hit you. Rock, put, you know, standard drills. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. No. But we would, quite often, we are training to do these kind of continual. We're not stopping our technique, but it's a kind of flow, trying to get our locks on we didn't go on so we flow with the lock flow thank you <laughs> etc look at that i beat a man on two walking sticks <laughs> hang on <laughs> not yet you mate <laughs> <laughs> i bet you feel really big now don't you bigger than you <laughs> <laughs> but actually you need to play with these because if we do get you'll be surprised how many of these sessions you don't see, it actually ends up like this. Yeah. <laughs> we'll leave this one in for this one. It, it's not pretty. <laughs> so if I come in, and he does see that, and... So I'm, I'm gonna move. So I come in, I've missed that, what's he gonna do? I need to come through. So we're looking at our neck technique. Oh, look at that, I'll punch you in the arm. Yeah. And it comes through again. So we're looking at these whole bringing through techniques rather than trying to do the blunt force trauma because striking hard down on the collarbone on the face is going to cause a lot of problems but dragging it through will cause enough discomfort hopefully to discourage them but not permanent damage that could cause you a lot of bother 
All we're considering is, if it's a flinch reaction, your cane's there, you're driving that through, it doesn't have to be precise for your initial attack, uh, defensive manoeuvre. Because you'll find, you do your flinch, and I'll go, did I get you? You, well, you missed me chest, but you got me right in the... And that's what happened. So if your guard position is here, bringing that up into a guard gives you that um, position to do your strikes and then you've got all this kind of malarkey. Yep. So all we're saying is this in a pinch is good, same amount of power as a javelin or a bayonet, but you don't have to be as precise. So it's good to practice precision. Thanks for watching guys, we hope you liked the video. Um, drop us a line down below, let us know what you think, any ideas. We are growing, thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share, to ring the bell. Keep ringing. On the bells. On the bells. The bells. Free that ferret with every litre of petrol. No. Short B starts and see what happens to ferrets. <laughs> Free the fair, unleash the beast, and snack on the ferret. With, Toodles. With pineapples and cheese. If you'd like to see more about the figure of eight, there'll be a video below, uh, appearing below me. Click on that. If you want to see a nice video, if you look below me, there's a crook strike. Is it a good crook strike? Well, I stole it from me. That's a crook. Bye, Kevin. Bye, Chris. <laughs>